Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Back in the saddle again after a week in the Florida Keys. Greeted to temps in the low teens, middle of the week, and lo and behold, a big storm system on the way for this weekend here along the Jersey Coast. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine with a rather dismal fishing report for the weekend ahead. I can't lie. I mean, many of the boats at the Jersey Shore and down into Delaware uh, continue to sail for, for blackfish or porgies in between these weather fits. Um, I know some, some boats are trying to sneak in a trip this Friday uh, before Snapocalypse comes through. Um, but we are trying to figure out exactly at this point uh, how the snow and the winds that are in store for us for Saturday will impact things uh, here in our region. I'm going to go out on a limb here, folks. I'm calling for a 5 out of 10 on the bread and milk index for this Saturday at the Jersey Shore. That's typically about a one loaf surplus and a one and a half normal milk consumption. So be careful out there <laughs> this weekend. Boats do continue to sail in between the weather fits. As I said, in Belmar, the big Mohawk started the week off with some pretty good tog action with the boat reporting guys had some limits. Some guys had a few, uh, but everyone had something to go home with, with was the report that we got on Monday when the big Mohawk sailed. I know Captain Ralph aboard the last lady, he's trying to sneak in an open blackfish trip uh, for this Friday before things turn snotty on Saturday. When we look out of Manasquan Inlet, I got a report from Jason Rudides. He reported his first double-digit blackfish over this past weekend while fishing on the Jamaica 2. This monster tog weighed in at 15 pounds, was nearly 28 inches long out there at Grumpy's in Seaside. Jason said this personal best beast hit a whole white legger. So that's a nice fish. Couple of bulkheads over. The big Jamaica continues to sail for those offshore wrecks on the weekends. Uh, I know they had a couple of pollock, uh, a couple of monkfish, a few Boston mackerel, I believe, as well over this past weekend. And of course, a whole bunch of jumbo porgies. But again, due to the weather this weekend, I don't believe the big Jamaica is sailing. In fact, things get even quieter the farther south we go down the Jersey coast and into Delaware. Uh, I know the Osprey out of Atlantic City, she wrapped up her tog fishing for the winter uh, just a couple of weeks back. She'll be sailing again in April. Uh, of course, you do have tog in New Jersey uh, January and February, but things do get kind of thrown up in the air a little bit because of the weather. So I think for the March closure, the Osprey will come back in April. A lot of boats doing the same thing. In fact, I called Captain Bob Cope of Full Ahead Sport Fishing on Wednesday this week. He said he and Fish and Fever Captain uh, Tom Daffin, they decided to haul out for the winter fishing. Bobby said that they had to run 20 to 30 miles out for a really good blackfish bite out of Cape May. So he decided to call it a season for now. But again, a lot of those boats will be back in and sailing uh, come April when uh, we get a return on blackfish. Uh, but again, don't forget, you still have TOG through the month of February. So we'll have to see in the next couple of weeks, maybe we get some better sailing days, maybe somebody finds a bite, but that is still in play if you're looking for somebody in the water who's still fishing. I would say the best bet at this point in New Jersey is Outback and those white, white perch. Uh, uh, we spoke to Captain, um, uh, Captain Dave at Obseekin Bay Sportsman Center. Dave said that his uh, bloodworm guy continues to keep him stocked throughout the winter for folks looking for some white perch. Uh, I would think the mullica, great egg down into the Mars as well. Uh, but I do know some folks that catch some white perch up on the rare. If you're looking for information on that, try to give Steve at Upfront Bait and Tackle a call. Uh, he's not open all the time, but he will take your call. So if you're looking for some white perch someplace up on the rare, and give him a shout. For more tactical advice on white perch this month and into February, the February edition of the Fisherman Magazine is out. And Eric Burnley has a great article on page 28 of this month's edition, the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition. Uh, in fact, Eric highlights a bunch of spots throughout Delaware where you can find some white perch on some of those estuaries, those creeks and rivers, but some of the tactics that Eric talks about are equally good throughout the Garden State as well. Of course, when you get your copy of the Fisherman Magazine for February, the first question you're going to ask is, why is there a fluke on the cover in February? Well, that's a darn good question. 
You'll have to see my editor's log on page three. We spoke about this a few weeks back, maybe a month or so, but there's an article in there on that Mid-Atlantic Fishery Management Council meeting back in December where we got fleeced on additional quotas. The piece that I wrote that's on page three, it's called The Crumb Bums. And after you read through that, I think you're gonna understand how I've been thrown off a couple of Christmas card lists. The Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission, the ASMFC, is meeting this week. Uh, I've been sitting in on some of the hearings back and forth. Uh, I'm not sure uh, what they're talking about in terms of these conservation equivalency approaches to black sea bass. This was from Tuesday's meeting. But yeah, we're going to have to figure out again uh, at some point, I expect when the Mid-Atlantic Council comes together to meet in February, what exactly a 28% reduction on black sea bass means in 2022, but uh, the ramifications, uh, I'm thinking Bohica. That's the way I see it. If you know New Jersey 101.5, you have, you have knowledge of that. I'll have more to report on the ASC, ASMFC discussions, notably striped bass, in next week's video forecast. Look for something posted soon at thefisherman.com. The Wednesday five-hour session on ASMFC striped bass needs a little bit of time to digest. If you personally would like to know more about the fishery management process, how these sausages are made. Perhaps you're looking at a future council or commission position. A great intro to that is from Rutgers University. They host a unique course called Introductory Fishery Science for Stakeholders, or iFish. That's through the, the uh, Rutgers Cooperative Extension. These upcoming iFish classes will meet every Tuesday night from 6.30 p.m. until 9 p.m. That's from February 1st all the way through April 5th. See all the details, it's right there on the screen, but if you want some more information, you can call Kelly Jorgensen or Dr. Doug Zemeckis at 732-349-1152. Uh, that course uh, closure, you only have this week to sign up for that class that starts next Tuesday. So I guess you're thinking that must be why I'm wearing my Rutgers jersey this week. Sure, that's it. But it's also because I hope you'll be rooting for the Cincinnati Bengals when they play the Kansas City Chiefs this Sunday at 3 p.m. Keep an eye out for number 46, Bengals long snapper Clark Harris, a Rutgers alum, the two-time Manhattan Cup championship with catch and release striped bass. And of course, he's my brother. So as the Who Day Club, they're playing on Sunday for a shot to go to the Super Bowl. So don't expect me to pick up the phone between three o'clock and 6 p.m. on Sunday. In addition to Sunday football, I have a few other ideas for you this weekend. Boat shows, tackle sales, and perhaps even a trip to the Cape. But first, let's head west for an update from my man, George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, the ice continues to build here, especially with these night single digits, going to continue to build that ice over the next several weeks and hopefully give us a great extended hard water season. And we are starting to get some folks check in with some great fish. You know, Seb Choinsky checked in with uh, some great crappie through the ice. Uh, who doesn't love a good crappie fishing, even in the, in the open water, let alone the ice fishing, it's always a good time. And uh, Will Grouper up on Wallen Palm Pack getting into some nice perch. Uh, them guys have been running around, all kinds of fish up there. Matter of fact, uh, Paul Chickarine uh, up on Wallen Palm Pack 2 getting into some nice uh, pike up on the pack there. So lots of good fishing. Pretty much anything you guys want to target is going to be hitting right now. So take your pick if you want bass. Uh, they're catching muskie. We've seen a lot of muskie being caught as well. So pretty much anything you want to target right now, guys, get out on that ice and you're probably going to catch it. Now, if you're starting to get some spring fever already, I'll tell you what, the uh, outdoor shows are starting to, to come online. Uh, there's a couple coming up. I know Jim and I will be at the Philly Fishing Show. Uh, this coming weekend, though, starting today, the 27th and running through the 30th, is the Early Bird Sportsman's Expo, and that's out at the Bloomsburg Fairgrounds. I'll be out there this Sunday taking a look around myself, see what's coming out for this season, and hopefully I'll get to see some of you folks there and talk a little fishing, too. But anyway, guys, get out on this ice. The season is here. Be safe. And from Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. The New York Boat Show at the Javits Center in Manhattan is officially underway. In fact, the Fisherman Magazine has a booth there, number 401. If you're heading to the show, stop by the Fisherman booth, say hello to the gang, get your new or renewing subscription to the Fisherman Magazine, and check out what your free gift is going to be. Um, I know also we have quite a few Jersey folks there at the event. My, uh, my good friend Johan from Causeway Marine. 
He's got a booth there staffed. And no, it's not just pleasure boats. In fact, Causeway has a couple of great fishing machines, but you will find fishing machines there in Manhattan this week. For more information, go to nyboatshow.com. You can get all the details. The crew at Grumpy's in Seaside, they have a special sales event this Saturday, January 29th. A lot of 20% off deals, a ton of table discounts at up to 50% off, so you wanna get there early for that. Uh, also, hard to find Scabelli Lures. I think I said it right that time, John, didn't I? I'll tell you what, if you want to put some gliders to the test in 2022, you want to get to Grumpy's early. Say hello to John, get those Scabellis load up for the new season ahead. For you offshore guys, tickets are selling fast for the Canyon Runner Offshore Seminar Series Saturday, February 5th in Atlantic City. So whether you're a hardcore Canyon Runner yourself as it is and looking to hone your edge a little bit, or perhaps you're looking to jump full time into the canyon fishery, uh, do not miss this Canyon Runner Seminar Series. Get on the horn, call Adam at 732-272-4445. Now, you know Cape Cod is known to be a fishing hub for saltwater anglers, but with nearly 1,000 freshwater lakes and ponds, many of them stocked with trout on a regular basis, basis it's a great uh, winter destination as well. You might want to wait until after the snow passes, but I'll tell you what, whether you're looking at a day trip or a long weekend, the hotels are cheap, the restaurants are open, the tackle shops are open, and the fishing can be phenomenal up there. With more on that, here's the Fisherman's New England Edition editor, Dave Anderson. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go back to this riveting fisheries, fisheries discussion on Menhaden at asmfc.org. Take it away, Dave. When you think of a wintertime fishing getaway, you're probably thinking of somewhere warm, but if that doesn't fit your budget, or if you don't like to fly, or if you just don't have the time for it, you can head out to Cape Cod on the cheap, especially in the off season. Uh, the hotels are cheap, the ponds are well stocked. There's almost a thousand ponds on Cape Cod. Everything's covered, the fishing's great, and it's an easy run. With nearly a thousand ponds, and many of them well stocked, the Cape offers some of the best sweetwater fishing you'll find anywhere in the Northeast. And if you're gonna make the trip, here's what you need. If you wanna be fishing the Cape Freshwater, something like this will get the job done. We have a 2500 Sedona on here, so the entry level of Shimano's and the St. Croix Triumph, uh, great warranty from these guys. I absolutely love the action. I think this is a 6'6 medium light power, so it kinda of does everything. I can do light bass and heavy trout stuff with it. You can walk with one combo and just love it. So at the Goose, we have a uh, bunch of options for waders, so keeping yourself warm in these conditions. So we got a lot of frog togs on the more entry level. We got Sims on the nicer stuff. Uh, I definitely keep a nice pair of warm sweatpants underneath and usually double up on my layer of socks, uh, a hoodie, and then like a nice winter jacket, uh, probably with a nice warm beanie as well, just to keep yourself warm or you're gonna be out there for a couple hours. So I, I think Dave and I both are fans of the Sling Pack. I do it a lot for my, my lighter uh, saltwater schoolie action in the spring too. Uh, and just with one tray and a couple of packs of probably like the Gary Yamamoto's or a little Kytex. And it allows me to, uh, to walk and cast and keep my hands free, you know? As we know, uh, the Cape is riddled with tons of kettle ponds. So we're hunting, we're kind of uh, walking around, which is why the waders are gonna be critical. And the gear is kind of critical because we have to search for the bite. Um, and we're kind of walking and casting, walking and casting. So you got to cover ground to find these fish, um, which is plentiful. We got a lot of uh, browns, brookies, rainbows that are all stocked on the Cape. We also have a lot of uh, good smallmouth and monster pickerel in these uh, Cape Cod ponds in the wintertime can be very good as well. So you can log on to massfishandhunt.com and you can get all your freshwater licenses. Mass Fish and Hunt is a great resource for acquiring your license, but it's also great um, for a resource for, for finding what fish or uh, what ponds are stocked. So we can search on a search engine on massfishandhunt.com and you can find out and narrow down to your uh, most productive areas. I cannot preach these Baker jerk baits. This is just shy of three inches and I have caught everything on it. Uh, the crackleback color is an absolute must for me. It's in my top three freshwater lures, period. Um, they got great hooks, they cast really well, and they catch everything from a huge largey to a little perch. 
I just uh, swear by them, and they're 10 bucks, so it's, you know, it doesn't make you broke in the process. And these are the TRD Ticklers from Z-Man. This is the moon ring color, and it's kind of like a, a pink, bluey, purpley hue. Um, and then in the standard TRDs, I was using, they call this smelt color, and it's kind of a, an off silver and white. And uh, these are both uh, highly productive lures, um, and they last a really long time. The TRDs don't tear, they catch a million smallies on one. So good value. So the line that I use on most of my freshwater setups are either 10 pound or 15 pound. This J8 casts phenomenally well, really quiet through the guides, gets a recast. And then across the board, I pretty much use eight pound. This is a Seaguar Blue label, very common. Uh, everybody's got it. And eight pound works great for uh, a mixed variety. Anything other than a big pickerel is going to do pretty well for Cape Cod Ponds. Bunch of little accessories. I like to have a good set of seven inch pliers. I also like to have forceps too, because sometimes these trout are really sensitive and they choke the hook really deep. If you don't want to keep it, um, we're trying to do as little as damage as we possibly can. So uh, that helps in um, healthy catch and release fishery here. We're trying to keep them off the shore and off the rocks uh, to keep the slime on the trout. So I do use a, a rubber net that just help in, uh, help in do, let, doing less damage to the trout and um, getting them back there and swimming healthy. Down here at the Goose Hummock, uh, we got guys that can definitely help you out. I've been fishing here my whole life, so the hours of freshwater ponds I have spent is in the thousands, um, and I will transfer my knowledge down to you guys to help you out. You have many choices when it comes to where to stay. Places like the Ocean Edge Resort to the charming accommodations at the Cove Motel, and of course there are Airbnbs and VRBOs all over the place. A quick web search will put you on the right path. Even though it's the off season, there are many great restaurants to stay open year round and you won't have to wait in those insane summer lines. And if your travel companion is not a fisherman, they can explore the quaint town of Chatham, hike or bike on the numerous trails, there's tons to do for everybody. And because the Cape juts out into the Atlantic Ocean, the ponds out there rarely ever freeze, so there's almost always open water options for any angler. So if you've got cabin fever and you feel like you just got to get out and do some fishing, Escape to the Cape where you can enjoy the great outdoors. Steigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.